Okay, it's on? Yes. Okay, uh, back to where we left off with Lich Benshin. Uh, the last thing we were discussing is in some places, in Shkunach itself it says, the best fuel to use instead of candles is olive oil. But like we said, the Rebbe writes in Beis Sarav that they only, uh, they used regular candles, they didn't necessarily use uh, oil. Now we also learned how long should the candles burn? So we learned preferably until the end of the meal, at least until Kiddush, or if that not, uh, you have to, uh, that you're benefiting from the candles. So we learned you can't bench licht, you can't run out of the house right away and come back after the candles are extinguished because then you made a brach on the vatola and you didn't do the mitzvah. Okay, now, the candles, where, where should the candles be lit? Where? So, halachically, they have to be lit primarily in the room that you're eating from, in, eating in, I mean, and it has to be in a way that you could benefit from the candles. There is an Indian in halacha to put the candle, at least one candle, on the table itself. But in fact, the Rebbe said that when he went to Mechon Chana before the Seder on Pesach, so the Rebbe noticed the licht were not on the table, they were next to the table. So the Rebbe mentioned it's Kedai that one licht, the one candle, it should be on the table itself. That doesn't always work for people, depending on how big the table is and kids, whatever. But they have to be in the room that you're eating primarily because you need to be able to benefit from the candles. And the, we learned the various, we learned already the various different reasons why you light candles. So when you light it in the room that you're using and you're eating by, that's you're fulfilling all the reasons for lighting Shabbos candles. Huh? Okay, you're allowed halachically as long as you're in the room where you're eating that you see benefit from the candles is good. Okay, now the candles themselves, because they were designated for the mitzvah, once they're lit for the mitzvah, you can't use it for any other thing that's not a mitzvah. For instance, I'll give you an example. What happens if a woman lights Shabbos candles and the husband's about to go to show and he's a smoker? So he wants to uh, light a cigarette from the Shabbos candles and run out of the house, you know? because he has 18 minutes to finish a cigarette. So that you shouldn't do it because the candles are hooks to the mitzvah, so they're designated for the mitzvah. You shouldn't do it for any other thing. Now, if a candle was lit and it went out, so even though it's interesting, Allah it says, but Torah Shabbos, you can use the candle for whatever you want. But in Poskim it says that the, the custom is that let's say a woman lit five candles and one candle went out, the minig is after Shabbos, she lights that candle that went out and just, no bracha, just lights the candle that went out and leaves it until uh, it goes out. Now, one second. How do you light it up? Do you use the other candle? No, I'm saying Saturday. No, oh, one second. So now, I'm coming to this point now. No, Saturday night, you take... No, okay, now, Friday night, how should you light the candles? Now, it's, Shabbos candles are different than Hanukkah candles. Hanukkah candles are forbidden to benefit from. So therefore you can't light even the Shamas, let's say you're lighting Hanukkah, right? lighting this fifth night. So you light five, four, three, and then four goes out. And that means that then your Shamas goes out. You can't light it from one of the candles <clears throat> that you lit already, because you're not allowed to benefit from it. Shabbos candles, the whole purpose is to benefit from it. So. Halachically, it says it's, you're allowed to, but preferable not. You shouldn't light a match from one of the lit candles already to light another candle. It's preferable not to. One candle from the next candle, that you can light directly. So let's say, for argument's sake, uh, let's say a woman is lighting, again, five candles. <clears throat> so she lights one candle, and then with this one candle, she lights all the other five, or the other four. I mean. So that's no problem, because you're lighting candle directly from the candle. It's not going through a match. Even though it's all for the sake of mitzvah, so you'd be allowed to, but it's preferable not to, it says in Aloha. But lighting one candle from the next, in fact, is an advantage of lighting it that way, because then you don't have an issue when to put out the match. So the best thing is, in the practical level, because then you have a whole shayla, are you allowed to put out the match after you light all the candles? Are you not allowed to put out the match? We learned that already. But, so if you light one candle, and then with that candle you light the other candles, 
then according to all opinions, there's no problem. Then you don't have a problem what to do with the, how, how to extinguish a match, because there's no match to extinguish. If the candle goes out from the husband lighting the phoenix? If the candle goes out and it's within the 18 minutes, the husband or any man in the house could light it. Or another woman that didn't bench licht yet, if it happened right away. Once the woman finished benching licht, she, she cannot relight it. Now, one second. It says, no, you can't light to the yeah, oil, you can't light one for the next, obviously. The, 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 the candle yeah. Now, it says in Allah that the women light the candle, but the men should prepare the candles. That's their part in the fulfillment of the mitzvah. In fact, it says, in, in, Al Rebbe also brings it down, even though the Rebbe writes in Beis Rab, they didn't do it. In the Rebbe's house, they didn't do it. But the Pearl, Al Rebbe says, that the husband should prepare the candles, you know, melt them in or put them in. In fact, they should even light them before Shabbos, earlier. Should light them and put them out because then, if it's already pre lit, it's easier to light again. It's just easier for the woman to light again instead of going crazy with lighting of the candles. So uh, again, in the Shkhanarch it says the husband should prepare the candle. What? We didn't get to the bracha yet. I know, but if you could read by the Shabbos candles, why couldn't somebody light a cigarette? Because you're benefiting from the licht and, and the mitzvah of Shabbos. It can't be used for anything else. Huh? You could read because that's the purpose of enjoying Shabbos. Okay, huh? It has to be only for light and not for anything else. To, for light. That's the purpose of Ner Shabbos, for light. You can't light a cigarette, that's not for light. Huh? What, do you have a hundred candles? I mean, how much are you getting? Here? <laughs> okay, now, here's an interesting thing with the bracha. In, a, in the Gemara, in Shkhanarch, it says, the bracha is lahadik ner shal Shabbos. Okay, Shekshan, Mitzvah, Sifan, lahadik ner shal Shabbos. In Chabad, the custom is, and the Rebbe brings down, this is from, all the way back from the Alter Rebbe, that we make the bracha lahadik ner shal Shabbos Kodesh. It's not an issue of <coughs> adding another word to the bracha, because it's the, it's the end of the bracha already. So you could say after the bracha is over, you can say whatever you want. Therefore, taka like this past Pesach, where it's Friday night and Yom Tov together, then we say laadik there shall Shabbos vishal Yom Tov. We don't say Shabbos Kodesh because then you're putting a new word in the middle of a bracha that you're not allowed to do. Now, why is the text of our nusach to write laadik there shall Shabbos Kodesh? So a lot of there's a lot of ideas. Why in the world, you, why is, what's the reason why we had Latin Gersh Shabbos Kodesh? There's a very interesting reason given, which is a little bit of a, not a lumdus, but let's try to explain it in simple, as simple as possible. We learned before, men and women are equally obligated to, in Kiddush. Okay? Because even though it's a mitzvah connected to time, mitzvah sasesha is man grama, but... The fact is that the woman should not be obligated in Kiddush and candle lighting and all that. Nevertheless, the Gemara says, because Zachar v'shamar, b'dibar echad, Hashem said Zachar and Shamar simultaneously. Zachar is, remember Shabbos by lighting candles, making Kiddush. Shamar means, don't desecrate Shabbos. So the Gemara says, because in the same word, Hashem said Zachar v'shamar, so therefore, just like they're obligated not desecrating Shabbos, they're obligated also biblically in the mitzvah of Kiddush. We find the same thing by Pesach, by the way. Why are women obligated to eat matzah on Pesach? It's also a mitzvah connected to time. They don't have to do lulav. They don't have to do sukkah. Why do they have to do matzah? So the Gemara says, because in the same Pesach, it says, don't eat chametz, eat matzah. So because in the same Pasik it says, don't eat chametz, eat matzah, the Gemara learns that whoever is obligated in the negative commandment of not eating chametz is obligated in the positive mitzvah. So therefore women are obligated to eat matzah. Now there's a din like this. We learned that if people have equal obligations, they can fulfill each other's obligation. 
For instance, why can I make Kiddush for you? And you listen to Kiddush. Or why can I read the Megillah for you? Or either, all those mitzvahs. Because we're equally obligated. And therefore, I could be made to you with the mitzvah that we're equally obligated in. But let's say a woman cannot blow shofar for a man. Why? Because halachically, I mean, nowadays women accept it as an obligation. But halachically, shofar is a mitzvah connected to time. Biblically, women do not have to hear shofar on Rosh Hashanah. So because they're not obligated in shofar, they can't blow shofar for one who is obligated. Because you can't. You can't fulfill somebody else's obligation if you don't have a similar obligation. One of the reasons why a kid cannot make Kiddush for an adult, even though a kid is obligated for chinuch, for educational purposes, to make Kiddush, but that's only rabbinic. And the adult is biblically obligated in Kiddush. So a rabbinic obligation cannot fulfill a biblical obligation. Got, one minute. Got that so far? Okay, next. There is by Kiddush, and we didn't start Kiddush here, we're going to get more into details when we learn Kiddush. There is Biblical Kiddush and Rabbinic Kiddush. Biblical Kiddush is verbally articulating something about the sanctity of Shabbos. You say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Mekadosh HaShabbos, you did the Biblical Mitzvah of Kiddush, verbally. Chachamim came along and said, you have to do it also over a cup of wine. But that's rabbinic. Okay? That's rabbinic. So now, if a man davens ma'irif, man davens ma'irif, Friday night. So he said in davening, Baruch Atah Hashem Mekadosh HaShabbos. So he did biblical kiddush. Now he's only left with rabbinic Kiddush. Yes? So if a woman doesn't daven ma'iriv, she has a biblical obligation of Kiddush. The man has only a rabbinic obligation of Kiddush. How could the man make Kiddush for his wife? It's a problem, because he's only rabbinically obligated, and she is biblically obligated. There's a whole side lumbus here with we respond to call you saw it even as applies to women, men, whatever. So one of the reasons that by us the custom is to say La Adikner Shal Shabbos Kodesh, because once the woman says that Kodesh Shabbos Kodesh, she fulfilled her biblical obligation. Now it's only rabbinically obligated because it's only rabbinically that man and the woman are equal obligated, so you can make it for her. Huh? So Shabbos and Yom Tif is nishta zol b'chiyav and achanami. So the Ma'ay says, hey, really, really, even without that, the husband can make kiddush for the wife, even though she's more obligated than he is. But this has another. I get five minutes. Okay, this is another din that we learned already a long time ago. That uh, there's a din call Yisrael Arevim Zelaza. Okay, which means like this. If I heard Shaifa already, I am not obligated in the mitzvah, because I heard it. If I'm not obligated, how can I blow Shaifa for you? You're, you're obligated, I'm not. So how can I blow Shaifa? Well, you learned that if you're not equal, ob ob um, it's not an equal obligation, you can't do it for one another. So the Gemara says the reason why you could is because call every Jew, is responsible for each other. That means, if I heard Shafer, but you didn't, I have an obligation to make sure you hear Shafer. So because of that, I can blow Shafer for you. With the bracha. Ideally, you should make the bracha, but if not, I can make the bracha. Or I can make Kiddush for you, even though I heard already, Megillah, whatever it is, whatever the things are. Why? Because I'm responsible to make sure you hear Kiddush. So the question is, is this obligation of Kol Yisrael Adeven Zebezeh applied to women or not? Is it only men to men? Does a woman, is a woman obligated in the responsibility to make sure another Jew does their mitzvah? 
So there's a taste of Sarosh in Kedushin that says, no, she's not obligated. Okay? And therefore, the Neid of Yehud, the Taka, and Hilchus Kiddush brings down, both in the Chuvas and the Sadr Shachnaruch, the Neid of Yehud mentions this dilemma that we had, that we spoke about, if a woman didn't make Davin marry, how could the husband make Kiddush for her or she, whatever it is? Because he's not obligated to make sure she has her obligation. But the Alter Rebbe holds in a few places, not like the Neid of Yehud, and the Alter Rebbe holds that the mitzvahs women are obligated in, Mitzvahs women are obligated in, a man is obligated to the woman and the woman's obligated to the man. There is a din of arvis. This that the Tesis Harash says there's no responsibility of a woman, that's a mitzvah she's not obligated to do. But in a mitzvah, a woman has to do like Kiddush, so then even though the husband did biblical Kiddush, when he's only rabbinically obligated, he could still make Kiddush for the, for the wife. Because he's still responsible to make sure she keeps her mitzvah. Yeah. But if the native of the Taka writes, it's Archi, and he writes, it's a Taka issue if a woman doesn't have a mitzvah. Anyway, so Abidin really doesn't matter. Even without that, they can make Kiddush. For the wife, she, he, can, the she can make her own Kiddush if she wants. How about Sphere's What about Sphere's There's two opinions of Allah if women are obligated in Sphere's name or not. Uh, oh, because if she can't, it doesn't want to. Yeah, a woman can make kiddush herself if she wants. In, <laughs> because a man and woman are equally obligated, so that really a woman can make kiddush for a man. The wife can make kiddush technically for the man. But the Alter Rebbe writes, Tova Me'eda, it's an expression of a curse that the wife makes Kiddush for the husband. <laughs> because it, in, the, in, in, in a way, the man makes Kiddush for the wife. Tova Me'eda, actually, Tova Me'eda, should be like a, it's not a good. Anyway, Machashin, Zorizomer, Machashin, Zorizomer, 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 Zorizomer